Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm here with Donna Lynn Thomas. Welcome, Donna. Hi. Donna is here right now to talk to us about how to make these placemats, confetti placemats, but using an on-point ruler, the on-point ruler that you invented, that you devised. Um, we've talked about it before in Quilter's newsletter. We did a, um, a workshop, Quilter's, quilt maker's workshop, as well as a pattern. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing it in action instead of reading about it in a pattern that I was helping to edit. So I'm really looking forward to this demonstration. Well, and you'll find it's really easy. I mean, the, the way we use the ruler is just like a regular ruler. It's just doing something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But um, let's look at this placemat. Um, this one is made from taupes, and I just I love taupes, so it's always one of the first things I gravitate to. But it would be so much fun. Think about this as a uh, celebration placemat, you know, for a special occasion done in bright, you know, happy colors. Mm -hmm. Or there's I have this lovely little cupcake print that I think it would be great for a kids. You know, I have granddaughters for their placemat for them. Mm -hmm. Um, you can do in traditional reproductions, you can do in uh, bright, happy Caribbean, you know, batiks. So many different ways that you could make this place. Christmas Matt, ribbons. Christmas, I have Christmas fabric set aside, I'd like to make one of those. And the pattern also has um, instructions for a table runner as well, just okay. to, you know, about, uh, I think it's 11, 12 inches by 30 some inches. So it's just a nice, it's not a big one, but it's a mm -hmm. nice one just for the center of a table. But these are just so easy to make. and. Um, so we're going to be using a regular ruler and the on-point ruler to, to, to cut the pieces for this. The assembly is very simple. It's not a difficult thing to make. But um, the reason we want to use the on-point ruler is because um, our regular rulers will cut things to measure evenly from side to side. Right. But I want these to be 2 inches wide this way, and I want this to be 12 inches long this way, so I can cut an 8.5 by 12.5 mm -hmm. inch center here instead of some obscure measurement. So what I'm going to do is use the on-point ruler to cut these squares to be two inches diagonally. Um, there's no math involved, and you don't even have to add for seam allowances. There's okay. nothing you have to do except know what you, you want. You put me out of a job. You understand <laughs> that. Well, no, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's very easy to do. So yes. let's take a look at the ruler. And it's, it's called the on-the-grid on-point ruler, just so that a reminder to people, when you buy your ruler... Inside the packaging, there's full instructions and a free pattern. And I'd like to remind people of that because so many people buy their rulers, they mm -hmm. rip their, their packaging off and throw mm -hmm. it out, and then where are the instructions? Yeah, it's, it's, it makes sense when it's explained, mm -hmm. but it isn't necessarily intuitive. Right. The way you know a, a standard rotary cutting ruler is, and I think people, some people make it more complicated than it has to be. It's really okay. just a very simple thing. But if for some reason you are somebody who did throw your stuff away, it's all available on my website as free downloadable PDF. Very smart. Because I know that happens. I've had students that, well, where were the instructions? In the trash. <laughs> so anyway, it looks like a regular ruler. It, it it has the appearance of a regular ruler, but you'll notice that there's a half inch margin on all four sides, mm -hmm. and that uh, accounts for the seam allowances, the two-quarter seam allowances on anything we're going to be cutting and sewing. So, so you don't need to take that into account on either side. It's just on one edge, and then you're off to the races. Yes, yeah, you don't even okay. think about seam allowances because it's already added in for you. Um, now, these grid lines uh, look like you know regular grid lines, but they don't measure inches this way. The key to all of this is they measure inches from corner to corner. So if you look like at this diagonal line here, mm -hmm. from this corner to this corner is an inch. From that corner to this corner is an inch. We don't know what this dimension is. We don't need to know it. Um, so when you cut a square, if you cut something at the three inch mark, you're actually gonna be producing something that measures evenly on that diagonal, it'll be three inches on the diagonal. And this accounts for your seam allowances. And that's why you don't need to know anything about mm -hmm. what you want the diagonal to be. So let's take a look at cutting, how to cut. Just the plain square. This, I'm going to cut this blue square. You're going to use it just like a regular ruler. There is nothing different about using the on-point ruler as far as process goes. Okay. Since I want this to measure two inches on the diagonal, I'm going to cut strips at the two-inch mark. 
just like I would regular strips. But they're called marks because they're not two inches wide this way. They're the marks indicating yeah. a two-inch diagonal. Okay. Let's not cut into the placement. Hmm. Okay. I want to use that again sometime. So now I'm going to cut the selvages off. No, we'll just do it this way. I'm just going to cut the selvages off like you would normally. Now to cut squares, I'm going to cut at the two-inch mark. You know, same mark, same mm -hmm. distance. So I'm going to cut squares at the two-inch mark, just like a regular ruler. And when I sew these in here, and the quarter inch seams are taken in, it'll measure two inches on the diagonal. That's Very all there nice. is to it. Yeah. There's nothing beyond normally that. Normally when, when people design a pattern or we're writing a pattern, we're figuring on this measurement. That's and whatever right. this ends up being is what it ends up being. Yeah. But we're having you cut on this measurement. So this is really yeah. Yeah, ingenious so that you do get that standard width. That's right. That's right. And you know, our regular rulers would be producing, like you said, something that's measuring evenly from side to side, when what we want here is from corner to mm -hmm, corner. Mm -hmm. So that's the ruler does the opposite. Use it the same way, but it's producing a measurement that's even on a different angle of the ruler, yeah. of the piece. Okay? So that's how you would cut all these squares. And you'll notice in this, this pattern, to make this kind of twist, I have a dark and a medium, dark and medium of the same colors here. Uh, you could do all the same color. You can vary it up. But I have you know dark and medium blue, dark and medium green, dark and medium pink. Mm -hmm. These triangles are basic quarter square triangles. So because I know this is two inches, then I know this is two inches as well. Right. So figuring the size square I need for these is very simple. I would take two inches and add one and a quarter, cut squares that size, cut them on both diagonals, mm -hmm. and I have my quarter square triangles. That's all there is to that. And the same for these colors here. Right. Okay. So now it comes to cutting these parallelograms. Because the parallelograms, I also want to have them measure evenly this way. This is two inches. I want this to be two inches on this edge as well. But with, with these, we also want them to be two inches wide this direction, because that's what this strip is, is two inches wide. Right. So we're going to use two rulers to cut this. Okay. One is to cut the strip width this way, which we'll use the regular ruler for. And then we're going to turn and cut using the on-point ruler to produce this dimension. So we'll begin with a regular ruler. And I'm not going to cut this because I've already cut the strip to show you, but you would cut the two and a half inch. This is two inches this way, so plus half an inch. So two and a half inch wide strip with a regular ruler. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that's what I've done with this. So we don't need that anymore. Now we're going to use the on point ruler to cut those parallelograms. These parallelograms. You can also use it to cut diamonds that have all That'd four legs the same. Yeah. yeah, because with diamonds, you actually want this leg to be the same on all four yes. sides. And so you would use this for both dimensions, the two-inch uh, two mark and then two-inch uh, cut for the other side. So I'm going to get my point first. So I'm going to turn my strip right side down, and with the diagonal line on the top edge of the strip, mm -hmm. I'm going to make my cut. Now I turn the strip to the other side, and if you're left-handed, um, you would be doing the mirror image of this. And that's all. I, I, I do deal in the two books that I've written, On Point Patchwork and then Quilt Making Essentials, which also has the On Point Ruler in it. Um, there are diagrams and illustrations oh, for left-handed people as well. So now I want to cut this at the two-inch mark because I want this to be two. So I will put the two-inch mark on the uh, that edge that I just cut and the diagonal line on the top and start slicing. And when set in place and sewn on all four sides, mm -hmm. it'll be two inches this way and two inches that way. Mm -hmm. So it works very nicely. And so we, again, I would cut in all the different colors. I would cut blue, green, and pink, and um, of these different parallelograms to make the pieces for this quilt, for this placement. So once you've got all those pieces cut and you've got your quarter square, square triangles done, we're going to sort of align them in diagonal rows the mm -hmm. way you do with a um, stand, more standard yes. cut this patchwork. Is, this is going to be, there's nothing different about this. It's just standard sewing at this point. So these are the pieces for this right-hand column. And these are not put together yet, but I sewed the quarter square triangles in place and did my two end pieces. Mm -hmm. And then those will just be sewn together. And again... I'm missing something in there. 
Let's, there we go. And then these are partially assembled for the second column. And here's the left-hand column. The only other pieces you need now are three one and a half by 12 and a half inch strips. And these are the bars that go right here, here, and here. And your eight and a half by 12 and a half inch piece that goes in the middle. And you sew these together and your placemat's done. That was very easy. And everything will be two inches this way. And, and it'll all fit. And it all and fits. Not a, a fudge factor. No fudge factor. Right. Because when you try to convert side to side to diagonal with math and then use a regular ruler, everything is off by an amount that will snowball yes. each time you sew. And so with the on-point ruler, you don't have that happening. Everything's the size it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. Um, and we don't know what that size is because we don't really care. Yeah, there are some block sizes that work well for on-point and diagonal um, and some that really don't. That don't, no. And, and you'd be cutting templates that are enormous in order to get setting right. triangles and stuff. So this is nice because it opens up a lot more possibilities and variation in terms of the sizes that you can set on point comfortably without those little incremental changes adding up over time and or over an space. And there's an entire library of blocks that we stopped making when we went to regular rotary cutting mm -hmm. because with regular rotary cutting, everything measures evenly from side to side. So all those old blocks that have on point uh, patchwork components, we didn't make anymore because we used to have to do it with templates. We can now do it with this ruler. So well, let's take a look at some other examples you brought that you've made yes. that, that feature maybe some different um, on point components. components yeah. yeah. And this one actually, um, this is called interlocking, and this is the block right here, well, right in here. This is nice turquoise. I love turquoise. Yes, me too. And it's a dark and a medium. Again, these are shot cottons. These are peppercorns, peppered cottons, and I just fell in love with her fabrics. Yes. But the block, I wanted it to be 12 inches. So that means these diagonal measurements have to be even. Yeah. If I did it this way, then I have this pieced unit that, that goes on the edge. What size is that then? I have no because idea. you're mixing straight set with on point. And that's where we run into problems. So when you use the on-point ruler, you can now uh, put on-point construction together with straight set construction. And again, uh, until you run into it, you might not realize that's an issue. Right. But once you do run into it, you realize it's a huge issue. Yeah. So this is interlocking. Okay. This has just got a name. I didn't have a name for it, but this is called 9 by 5 And the block is, again, um, just a, a basic block. But if you look at it, uh, it's set on point in the quilt, but mm -hmm. th that's not the aspect that we're looking at, the on point aspect. We're looking at these five nine patches that are set on point yes. inside the boundaries of the block. And they need to measure evenly this direction, mm -hmm. okay? And in this case, it's one and a half because these are uh, nine inch blocks, so it's one and a half uh, for each of these, making this four and a half, four and a half, which makes it nine. And again, it's being set with straight cut components. Yeah. And so you wouldn't be able to do that very well without the on-point ruler. And so, again... You'd be dealing with um, templates, Yeah, you'd have to go to templates. For the, even for little squares, you'd mm -hmm. probably, because the, the, the measurement would be so weird and in the middle of where we're used to measuring. And so. with the on-point ruler, since the processes are all the same, we cut these strips at one and a half inch mark, we sew them into strip sets, cut into segments, yeah. so we're still using all our same processes, mm -hmm. strip piecing and segment cutting, and it, it, it just gives us measurements that are nice and neat and and fit and work. Right. And again, a whole new library of things of the old blocks we can do and new blocks that we can create. This is an old block that I found in Barbara Brackman's book, and it has these segments that are set on point, and they need to be three inches across the diagonal. So I strip pieced strips that were cut at the one inch mark, one, two, mm -hmm. three, and then cut segments at the three inch mark, and so these things fit. And again, it makes it really easy to fit your, figure your side setting because you already know what the diagonal is. Right. Uh, normally when we're calculating side setting, we're first calculating the diagonal with the math we do. Mm -hmm. And we make them oversized and then trim them back. Yes. So now you don't have to do that. But also we want to look at the border. And these are squares set on point. And these are each four inches. If they're off by a sixteenth of an inch, you know, there's 14, 11 of them along this border. We're almost an inch off in, in measurements. So mm -hmm. with the on point ruler, these strips were cut at the four inch mark, turned and cut into squares at the four inch mark and it fits perfectly mm -hmm. on this border. Mm -hmm. So again, think of the piece borders you can do. Nine patches set on point, four patches set on point. Um, seminal piecing, you can all of a sudden do and it will fit right. against straight set stuff. Right. So there's a lot of potential here um, with the on point ruler. This is nice. This is called dotted line. And this is just a showcase for a big print, yeah. but it's surrounded by these arrow blocks and these are four patches set on point with a flying geese at the top. Well, these need to be the right size mm -hmm. if they're going to fit against this 
and the other arrow. So again, by using the on point ruler, we strip piece these four patches and put a little flying geese unit on the end and sew them around these big blocks. So, um, so many things that we can do that we have not been able to do for the last, well, since the 80s. When right. We went strictly to strip piecing, to, rotary right, cutting. Right, yeah. right, right. So lots of ideas. Fantastic. And, uh, yeah. So. Well, it was good to see it in action. Like I said, I'd read about it and I'd read through the pattern and the, the lesson, but it was great to see you actually using it and demonstrating it. So. And the key is to remember you use it like a regular ruler. Okay. The process is the same. Don't so. forget. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We really look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.